Hello everyone. In this video, I will be explaining you about phenylketonuria. Now, what is phenylketonuria? Phenylketonuria, there are different varieties of phenylketonuria. So, we can classify them into classical phenylketonuria, variant phenylketonuria, non-phenylketonuria, hyperalanemia, and malignant hyperphenylalanemia. Now, most common out of all these is a classical phenylketonuria because of a deficiency of an enzyme called phenylalanin hydroxylase enzyme. Now, what is the job of this phenylalanin hydroxylase enzyme? Now, the phenylalanin hydroxylase enzyme, it is going to convert an essential amino acid that is phenylalanin, which is an aromatic amino acid, into a, another aromatic amino acid and that is tyrosine which is a non-essential amino acid. Now basically what is happening here is phenylalanine will undergo hydroxylation process. Basically there is addition of uh, hydroxyl group to a phenylalanine and that's what is make uh, converts that into tyrosine. This job it will be done by phenylalanine hydroxylase enzyme. In order to do this, uh, add that hydroxyl group, there will be a requirement of coenzyme by phenylalanine hydroxylase enzyme, and the name of that coenzyme is tetrahydrobiopterin, and that is BH4. Now, this tetrahydrobiopterin is going to donate two protons to this phenylalanine hydroxylase enzyme where it is going to take a uh, an atom of oxygen from molecular oxygen and combine that with pro two protons to release it as water and another atom of oxygen it will be inserted to make tyrosine. So, now while this process occurs, your tetrahydrobiopterin it will be released as dihydrobiopterin. Now, the there will be limited quantities of tetrahydrobiopterin in our body. It means whenever tetrahydrobiopterin is oxidized into dihydrobiopterin, so we really need to take it back into its original state and that is tetrahydrobiopterin molecule. So, this particular job of reduction of dihydrobiopterin back into tetrahydrobiopterin, it will be done by an enzyme called dihydroteridine reductase. Now this dihydroteridine reductase enzyme, it takes protons from NADH plus H plus and give it to BH2 and that when BH2 is converted to BH4. So this is how we regenerate BH4 and maintain the quantities of BH4 thereby more and more phenylalanine can be converted into tyrosine. Now this BH4 as such originally it will be synthesized by a molecule called GTP, guanosine triphosphate which is a high energy molecule. This guanosine triphosphate it can undergo biosynthesis of tetrahydrobiopterin molecule. That's how you synthesize a original brand new molecule of tetrahydrobiopterin. Otherwise we regenerate every time whenever we use tetrahydrobiopterin. Now overall in the conversion of phenylalanine into tyrosine, phenylalanine hydroxylase enzyme participate in that reaction and this particular reaction is helped by another enzyme that is dihydroteridine reductase which will help in the regeneration of tetrahydrobiopterin. Now coming to phenylketonuria. The classical phenylketonuria is because of a mutation in a gene that is coding for phenylalanine hydroxylase enzyme and the name of the gene is PAH, uh, PAH gene, phenylalanine hydroxylase gene. The mutation in phenylalanine hydroxylase gene will lead to significantly redu reduced amounts of phenylalanine hydroxylase or even absence of phenylalanine hydroxylase giving rise to classical phenylketonuria. In classical phenylketonuria patients, only less than 1% of normal phenylalanine activity will be pre present. It means 99% of phenylalanine activity will be, it won't be there. So because of this what happens, there will be significant accumulation of phenylalanine in the tissues. 
Now what will happen to this phenylalanine when there is a mutation in phenylalanine hydroxylase enzyme? Now the accumulated phenylalanine in phenylketonuria patients, so it will undergo alternate metabolic fate. And what are the alternate metabolic fates of phenylalanine? Now the phenylalanine which is accumulated in the tissue, so it can be converted into phenylpyruvate, phenylacetate and phenylethanolamine. Now the phenylpyruvate, it's basically pyruvate is a keto, it is keto group containing molecule and acetate is a keto group containing molecule here. So the phenylpyruvate, phenylacetate, phenylethanolamine molecules, they will be elevated in the tissues and they come out into the blood and from blood they will get out of our body in the urine. So the levels of phenylpyruvate, phenylacetate levels, it will be increased in the urine. These are basically ketone derivatives of phenylalanine. So we call this particular disorder as phenyl ketone. Especially because of the accumulation of phenyl acetate in the urine, so it will give rise to a characteristic odor to the urine or characteristic smell to the urine or any body fluids of this phenyl ketonuria patient. And that characteristic odor is a musty odor, musty or mousy odor. Musty or mousy odor is the characteristic odor of, uh, of the urine sample of or the body fluids of phenylketonuria patient and that is specifically because of phenyl acetate accumulation. So, now what are the other consequences of phenylketonuria? So, because there is elevation of phenylalanine in the blood and then consequently elevation of phenyl ketones in the blood and in the body fluids. Now this phenylalanine, it will be elevated so much that it can cross blood brain barrier much more than any other amino acids. Because this the phenylalanine, it will compete with other amino acids for large neutral amino acid transporter in the blood brain barrier. Because of this excess amount of phenylalanine in the brain, so it can damage neuronal tissues and ultimately it can give rise to a mental retardation in phenylketonuria patient. So the mental retardation is one of the significant clinical finding that you see in phenylketonuria patients. Along with the mental retardation, patients may have tremors, may have seizures, they have eczema that is basically a skin disorder and also they will have hypopigmentation. Why the phenylketonuria patients will have hypopigmentation? That is because when the phenylalanine is not converted into tyrosine, so there will be deficiency of tyrosine in the phenylketonuria patients. And that means tyrosine is going to form melanin in skin, especially tyrosine is the one which is converted to melanin in the skin melanocytes and melanin is a skin pigment. So in phenylketonuria patients when uh, insufficient tyrosine is formed, so that means there will be decreased synthesis of melanin, that is why there will be hypopigmentation in phenylketonuria patients. So hypopigmentation you can see on in the skin, you can see in the hair. So Overall, basically, they look like albinism patients. So, phenylketonuria patients will be having generalized hypopigmentation. So, hypopigmentation, mental retardation, tremors, seizures, eczema, and along with that, phenylacetate, phenylpyruvate accumulation in the urine, giving rise to that uh, characteristic musty or mousy order, will give you the diagnosis of classical phenylketonuria. All right, now. How to diagnose phenylketonuria? So the diagnosis it involves screening of phenylketonuria and confirmation of phenylketonuria. Commonly used screening test is uh, uh, Guthrie bacterial inhibition assay test. So presence of colony in the agar plate is a positive sign for Guthrie test and that means uh, it's a positive screening test. Screening test is Guthrie bacterial inhibition assay test. Then the diagnostic test we have my, uh, microfluorometric assay and we can use HPLC based methods and also tandem mass spectrometry. Tandem mass spectrometry can also be used to measure phenylalanine levels. Now, what is the treatment for phenylketonuria? So, phenylketonuria main treatment is now you need to restrict the phenylalanine content in the food. So, there is a special phenylketonuria diet which is basically referred as PKU aid. Now this PKU aid, that is phenylketonuria aid, which is also called as lofenolac, is a specially made semi-synthetic preparation where are decreasing the content of phenylalanine thereby. 
you are decreasing accumulation of phenylalanine in phenylketonuria patients. Now, when you are decreasing phenylalanine in the uh, in the diet, so now your tyrosine basically tyrosine becomes essential in phenylketonuria patients. That means we really need to supplement tyrosine. So, tyrosine supplementation has to be done in phenylketonuria patients. Now, the aspartame which is an artificial sweetener so this has to be avoided in phenylketonuria patients because aspartame is nothing but it is phenylalanine plus aspartate these are the two amino acids present in aspartame so if you are consuming if the patient with phenylketonuria consumes uh, aspartame that means basically they are consuming phenylalanine so it has to be reduced so this is what is about classical phenylketonuria there are some variant phenylketonurias or non-phenylketonuria hyperphenylalaninemia and these are because of decreased activity of phenylalanine hydroxylase enzyme because milder version of mutations that will be seen in PAH gene. So usually these are very mild conditions so it doesn't really affect, no, give rise to severe signs and symptoms. Let me explain to you what is malignant hyperphenylalaninemia. Malignant hyperphenylalaninemia is the most severe and lethal condition out of all phenylketonurias. Now, what is this malignant hyperphenylalaninemia? So, the malignant hyperphenylalaninemia is because of a deficiency or a mutation in a gene that is coding for dihydroteridine reductase enzyme and that is DHPR, dihydroteridine reductase. So if we go back to my uh, initial uh, part of this video that I told you whenever phenylalanine is converted into tyrosine we are going to use tetrahydrobiopterin and convert that into dihydrobiopterin. Now the dihydrobiopterin will go back to tetrahydrobiopterin using an enzyme called dihydroteridine reductase. So if there is any mutation in a gene coding for dihydroteridine reductase enzyme so that means activity of dihydroteridine reductase decreases. So that means there will be overall deficiency of tetrahydrobiopterin in the uh, tissues. So there will be deficiency of BH4, tetrahydrobiopterin deficiency will be there. Now you all know tetrahydrobiopterin is one of the requirement for phenylalanine hydroxylase enzyme to convert phenylalanine into tyrosine. That's why Deficiency of tetrahydrobiopterin, it leads to accumulation, a decreased conversion of phenylalanine into tyrosine. That means it leads to accumulation of phenylalanine in the tissues and that phenylalanine can go into alternate metabolic fates and then it can be converted into phenyl pyruvate, phenyl acetate, phenyl ethanolamine and they all appear in the urine sample giving rise to all the signs that we have seen in phenylketonuria. So, most of the means like mental retardation, eczema, hypopigmentation, all these signs will be seen in malignant hyperphenylalaninemia. On top of it, what else is seen in malignant hyperphenylalaninemia? It is because this tetrahydrobiopterin uh, coenzyme is not only needed by phenylalanin hydroxylase enzyme, it is also needed by other molecules uh, conversion in other metabolic pathways. Like as I have written here, Conversion of tyrosine into L-DOPA, which is done by tyrosine hydroxylase, that also needs tetrahydrobiopterin. Now, the conversion of tryptophan into 5-hydroxytryptophan by tryptophan hydroxylase also needs tetrahydrobiopterin. Conversion of arginine into citrulline and nitric oxide by nitric oxide synthase also needs tetrahydrobiopterin. So, in malignant hyperphenylalaninemia, because of mutation in DHPR gene, where there will be decreased availability of tetrahydrobiopterin. So, that means all these four enzyme activities will go down. That means you are not making the products here. So, when you don't make tyrosine, so not much of tyrosine is available to make the L-DOPA because even tyrosine hydroxylase is affected. So, when you are not making L-DOPA, that means there will be decreased synthesis of dopamine. Dopamine will be decreased, there will be decrease in norepinephrine and then there will be decrease in epinephrine. All these three neurotransmitters will be decreased because all three of them will come from L-DOPA. 
So there will be decrease in all these neurotransmitters that is dopamine is decreased, norepinephrine is decreased and epinephrine is decreased. So and also note that dopamine in the nervous system it is a inhib it is acting as an inhibitor of prolactin release. Now when there is a dopamine is decreased in malignant hyperphenylalaninemia that will lead to elevation of prolactin. This is one of the important point that you need to remember here. So because there is a decrease in dopamine there will be increase in prolactin in the tissues and later in the blood. So now these are the changes that is occurring because of decrease in tetrahydrobiopterin that is dopamine decrease, norepinephrine decrease, epinephrine decrease and increase in prolactin. Whereas at the tryptophan into 5-hydroxytryptophan level like by tyrosine or tryptophan hydroxylase because of the defect in uh, decreased availability of tetrahydrobiopterin. So when you don't get 5-hydroxytryptophan there, so derivatives of 5-hydroxytryptophan is serotonin. So there will be decrease in serotonin and later serotonin is the one which is converted to melatonin. So melatonin is also decreased. So melatonin is decreased there. So serotonin which is a neurotransmitter so that is also decreased and also nitric oxide synthase enzyme which needs tetrahydrobiopterin so decreased availability of that will lead to decreased nitric oxide. So nitric oxide is also decreased. So overall what you are seeing here is there will be decrease in the synthesis of neurotransmitters dopamine, norepinephrine, epinephrine, serotonin and nitric oxide these are all decreased and prolactin is this, this particular condition we refer it as a malignant hyperphenylalaninemia. Most of the time these patients they will die within two years of the disease. Now one of the treatment for malignant hyperphenylalaninemia is supplementation of tetrahydrobiopterin molecules. Uh, there is a drug called Cuvan. This is an FDA approved uh, drug that is Cuvan. So this Cuvan is basically it's a tetrahydrobiopterin. So it is called supplementation of Q1 means supplementation of tetrahydrobiopterin and thereby you will take care of these enzymes to a certain extent. So this is all about malignant hyperphenylalaninemia and in total phenylketonuria uh, disease. I hope this video has helped you. Thanks for watching.